everyone. Let's spend a few minutes talking about classes. Um, the way that we're going to use classes uh, over the next few modules is not really so much uh, worrying about things like inheritance or composition or things like that. Uh, we're not going to worry about like, you know, how to architect a whole system. We're really just going to use classes like they're a data structure. So in the last module, we dealt with hash maps and uh, holding on to pieces of data uh, kind of as one, right? Uh, in one of the stretch modules, there's one where there's movies and movies have an ID and a title and things like that. So um, in this module, what we're going to do is we're going to keep a couple of related pieces of data together um, as a p one piece of data. And so classes are really good for that uh, purpose. So let me show you kind of how to do that. Uh, I'm going to use one of the most uh, common classes that you would have to have uh, for most applications, right? And that's going to be user, right? The user, most important person in the application. So um, this by itself will create a user object. Uh, and it's sort of like, uh, a, you know, a new data structure, right? It doesn't have anything very interesting about it, but I can now create users. So I can say like Sam equals a user and Fred equals another user, right? And then if I were to print uh, Sam and uh, print Fred, um, you'll see over here, what I get is this user objects, right? So um, I want you to take a look at these two and how they differ though. So basically, um, see where it says user object at, and then it's got some information here. That information is uh, an address in memory. It's a specific spot uh, that it lives in, and it kind of distinguishes it from this user object. Even though they don't really differ, right? Nothing about them is really different. Um, they are distinctly separate things. And so Sam is not Fred and Fred is not Sam. If I were to say print uh, Fred equals equals Sam, uh, I will get false because they're not the same thing. They're two different users. So let's make user a little bit more interesting. Um, in order to uh, add something to a user, um, we can do something like add a property here, and I can say name equals um, unnamed user. This is kind of like setting a default value, um, but it's kind of uh, the thing to remember about it is it's the same for every single one of them. So if you were to say uh, sam.name uh, and then fred.name, right? Um, they're both going to come up unnamed user. So um, just because they are the same, though, that doesn't mean that these are actually two separate things. So if I were to say uh, Sam.name and I were to, to like change it here and say uh, Sam.name equals uh, something else, right? Um, it's going to change it for Sam, but uh, it's not going to change it for Fred because what I've done is I've operated on Sam here. But I'll show you kind of how this can get tricky uh, in a minute. So let's uh, make it so that rather than changing Sam's name like this, I can I can actually configure Sam by passing something in like Sam right? and then Fred. Um, if I just do that right now, it will kind of complain. It'll say, user doesn't take any arguments. I don't know what you're talking about. So in order to um, make Sam and uh, Fred different, what we're going to do is we're going to define what's called a constructor function. In Python, um, you'll notice that when I put uh, underscore underscore there, uh, basically, uh, this is what's called a magic method name. Those underscores are kind of like reserved by the Python uh, interpreter. And uh, they they look for the word init with the two underscores. And then anytime you create a new class and call it like this, uh, this will run the init function. Now, how do we actually create an init function? Well, here is where we things get a little tricky, right? It's not as simple as a normal data structure. So we have to pass in a variable here called self. And self refers to Sam or Fred. It refers to the individual element and not the class itself. 
Um, and then we can put any argument here, like name, for instance. And I can say uh, self name equals name. Right? And so now when I run this, Sam and Fred have names because um, what happened was when I ran this, uh, this function call is actually really this function call. And self.name uh, refers to the name of this variable or this variable and not uh, this variable. If I were to print um, user, or here, I'll print it up here, a user, Name, um, I'll still get a value. I'll actually get unnamed user because this actually belongs to this and Sam and Fred have it, but now it gets overrided here, basically. So um, that's how to create uh, a piece of data that kind of has like sub data under it. Now um, let's look at how might we uh, have this data reference each other because uh, that's another idea that we're going to use in this this module a bunch. So uh, def add friend, right? We're just going to have users that can add friends and then we're going to pass in that friend. And then in here, what we're going to do is say friends dot append friend, okay? Only we don't have a friends uh, list. So I'm going to create one here, self dot friends equals uh, an empty list, right? So you begin with a name, but no friends. And then down here, um, it's actually, sorry, self dot a friends, and that will actually, um, it's, uh, undefined name self. Oh, and then you have to pass it in, <laughs> uh, every single time you have a method here, if you want to modify the self parameter, but, um, up when we actually call this, when we say Sam dot add friend, um, I don't have to pass in that self, right? You can see that it's kind of here if i like put this here like the ide tells me uh i've already passed in self for you so i can add uh fred as a friend uh to sam and then i can say sam dot friends of zero dot name and then this should be fred so i should get fred twice here all right so i got fred twice because this points to Fred, if that makes any sense. Um, so I'll do the same thing for Fred. Uh, Fred, I'm sorry, dot add friend, and then I'll pass in Sam, and then I'll do the same um, access value here. So now um, Fred and Sam uh, should come up, Fred and Sam, even though I'm printing Sam's friend. So um, there's a common mistake, though, that I've seen people make here um, where you kind of do this instead, friends equals this. And then rather than creating self.friends, we just have a friends uh, variable. Let's see what happens when we do that. All right, we get Fred two times. So the reason for this is because friends is actually owned by user. So if you look at user.friends, okay, um, up at the top, you'll see that we have two user objects. We have that first user object and we have that second user object in here. And so those are two distinct user objects. That's Fred and Sam. And so now Sam.friends points to this friends, not this friends, even though we're accessing self.friends here. It doesn't actually matter. Um, um, we're accessing self.friends, but we're really dealing with the user's ownership of this friends thing. And so these are both pointing to uh, the same friends list. Um, so in order to get that, you know, to kind of go back to normal, it's self.friends uh, equals, you know, a uh, empty list. Uh, and so if we do that, then we have Fred and Sam. Uh, and user still then has like a friends list, a, a, you know, a basic uh, friends list, but you don't want to use users um, instance of it. Otherwise you don't have individual, uh, you know, identified objects actually acting on each other. 
So that's how we can make a reference. Sam references uh, Fred and Fred references uh, Sam. So if I were to do something like uh, fred.friends at zero dot name, since this is a reference to Sam, I could say uh, Sammy. So I can just change Sam's name like from Fred because what we're doing is we're referring to this uh, this this actual value uh, rather than um, you know some sort of reference that we can't access. Um, let's see, user has no attribute friends. Oh, get rid of that. So I changed Sam's name to Sammy from Fred's friends list here. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to talk about linked lists, and we'll talk about how to use these dynamics to create a linked list.